Welcome to this video. Uh, this is uh, a surfacing organic kind of video where something like this is what we want to make. This was a request that someone sent to me. They want to make something a little like this and you know it's a lot different than the straight edge extrusions that we make. It's a little harder to do the surfacing. So I'm going to do this with one method. There's a few methods you can use such as making surfaces that other surfaces can be relative to and things like that in SolidWorks that's complex. I'm going to just do a clean loft for the whole thing and see how that turns out. I think that's the most basic way you can go about doing something like this. So the first question I want to ask is what's the distance from here to here? And I'm going to say two inches. I don't really fish that much and this is clearly for trolling. So speaking of trolling, you know, it's great fishing, different on the web. So if you want to leave a trolling comment below, go ahead. Let's see the biggest troll win. <laughs> so I'm going to start by deciding what's in the middle. I'm going to say the highest point on this dorsal fin is in the middle. And I'm going to make a cross-sectional sketch here. I'm going to make a, a sketch for the nose, a sketch for the tail, and then I'm going to cross-section a few other things that I think might be important. Say the widest point here, I'm going to make a cross-sectional sketch on those pectoral fins. So let's get started. I'm going to start a new part, and I'm going to use my front plane as the middle. And I'm going to make a cross-sectional sketch as, as if I cut the tallest point on that dorsal fin right in half. What would that look like? So I'll get normal to this plane, and I'm going to use the spline feature. That's, splines are pretty good for organic shapes like this. And I'm going to call this point the bottom, make sure it's uh, vertical with the origin. I'm going to make that a little bit more narrow. And that shouldn't be bad. Make this have a really tight curve at the top. And I'll make this be a little bit more tangent. Adding a center line, I want to mirror this about this. And there you have the body, and here's the dorsal fin on top. I'm going to add some basic dimensions to make sure that I'm within the dimensions that I want to be in. If this is two inches long, and I want the dorsal fin to be, say, three quarters of an inch tall, that's probably about right. And I'm going to give this a basic width. Notice the curvature is going to be wider than the actual dimension. I'm going to call it a um, quarter inch, and I'll just adjust this to look a little bit more smooth. With that being said, I'll exit the sketch. Now I want to, um, since I've decided I'm going to go two inches, and this is the exact center, I'm going to say Features, Reference Geometry Plane, and I'm going to put a plane relative to the front plane, one inch away. And since the total distance is two inches, I'm going to add another plane relative to the front plane with a flipped offset. So my entity starts here, finishes here, and I'm going to run a loft in between. I'm going to add a very small circle, and the origin looks pretty good. I think I will use that. And I'll make it 10 thou. Very small. And that will be my beginning loft point. And now I'm concerned with the tail. So I'll hide this plane and get normal to the plane that I'm going to sketch my tail on. And I think I can just get away with an eccentric ellipse. So I'm going to start this ellipse um, somewhat near the middle. The tail doesn't go quite as high as the dorsal fin. And it goes lower than the body. So there's my ellipse. I'm going to move it down just a little bit down here. That's about right. How tall do I want my tail to be? 8.5 is a good number. Um, maybe I'll go with 0.8. That's really good there. And 53 thou is a little bit small, so I'm going to say that that's not bad. Lock this dimension in. This will probably fully constrain my sketch here. i got to get normal to it to reference the origin. And 200,000, very nice. We're not fully constrained, um, so I'm going to vertical and vertical. When not using splines, I suggest fully constraining the sketch. I don't fully constrain the splines because it's easy to adjust those organic type shapes that are somewhat arbitrary. Okay, now that I've got the start, end, and middle, Another thing that I'm concerned with is the widest point, because I want the loft to account for the widest point. So I'm going to make another sketch, and I'm going to make the assumption that from the middle, the widest point is about a quarter inch in front. So I'm going to make yet another plane. And it's going to be, again, referenced toward the front plane. I don't want the top plane. I'm going to make it referenced toward the front plane. And quarter inch, flipped offset in front. There you go. So that's where I'll make the pectoral fin sketch. Again with the spline. And if this is the nose, I'm going to say that the fins are going to be slightly above the nose. And I'm going to come out to about here. And then I'm going to kind of curve around this point and go up to just below the dorsal fin. About the same level as the tail at its tallest height. And there I have it. So I can start adjusting this to look a little bit more 
reasonable. And it doesn't like it crossing there, so I'm going to adjust this first. Yeah, that looks like a decent fan. I'll move this up just enough there. And now I can comfortably adjust my spline to be somewhat tangent to horizontal there. That doesn't look like a bad fin at all, actually. So I'm going to go to the center line and there. And I'm going to mirror this about this. Not too bad there. Uh, I'll keep some basic dimensions in so I can stay, keep all the critical stuff where I want it to be. So the general width, this isn't the exact width since there's some curvature there. Uh, I'm going to go... 1.5. Yeah, pretty wide shark. I think for a fishing line, it's probably not the best. So I'll, I'll go with, if I go with one, that's probably about right. I mean, that, that seems reasonable. Maybe I'll, I'll do a compromise. 1.15. Yeah. Yeah, I think that looks about right. How high do I want this to be? 0.55. Not too shabby there either. And I can constrain it more. I'm liking what I'm seeing, and I want to keep it open to make adjustments if I need to. So I'm going to exit the sketch there. Now, when I go to loft this, it, uh, it's just going to be straight line, kind of curvy line. It's not going to look that shark-like. And I want to remedy that. So I'm going to make some guide curves that will tell it how to curve from the front to the back. To do that, I'm going to make a plane to sketch on. And I'm going to go from center of the nose to the ends of the pectoral fins with this plane. And I'm going to sketch on this plane. So I'm going to start off by using the spline tool again. And I'm not going to touch anything. I'm just going to get it close to every cross-sectional sketch. And I want it to curve right here. So I'm going to curve it around here. And then I'm going to curve it around this point to get wider for the pectoral fin. And go close to this cross-sectional sketch. Close to this cross-sectional sketch. And close to the tail sketch. Now, I choose this and pierce that point onto the sketch. I'm going to choose this point in my cross-sectional sketch and pierce. This point, cross-sectional sketch, pierce. This point, the nose sketch, pierce. And I'll make my spline visually appealing. So I just think, what is the shark's body going to look like from the top? I think that looks pretty good. I will leave the rest underdefined in case I need to make some edits. And then when it's when it's all 100% how I want it, I can fully constrain it then if I'd like. Mirror this about this. Very good. And exit the sketch, hide the plane. Now, when I go to make this tail, I have this very beautiful curvature coming off the dorsal fin and moving into the tail. But my loft is going to be something more just a steady curve. And I want to preserve that beautiful curvature. So I'm going to now sketch on my right plane. And do the same procedure. Get close, but don't quite touch. To emphasize the uh, dorsal fin. I'll start curving up here. And get close, and get close, but don't touch. And get close, but don't touch. Now, I think that this should ideally be... Oh yeah, that looks good. No, you know what? I think this should be lower. So I'm going to exit the sketch and edit this to bring it down a little lower. I see what I've done there. So I'll just reduce this distance to, say, 0.35. And that will give me a pretty strong emphasis on that dorsal fin. I think that'll be pretty cool. Maybe I'll be a little bit more generous and say 0.42 or something like that. That's not bad. Rebuild, and go back to editing the sketch. So now that I've got an appearance that I like, choose the sketch and the point, pierce. And now I can start creating a curvature that I think would uh, the shark would look like. Yeah, now that's looking pretty shark-like there. 
I remember uh, going scuba diving once and running into a nurse shark with, and I, I had my GoPro on me, so I posted that video to YouTube. Um, you can find that here if you want to see that shark that I ran into as a nurse shark. Okay, um, lastly, if you're not tired yet, I'm going to do something that will dictate how the bottom runs, too, to make sure that I've got everything I need. I'll uh, highlight my right plane, looking good, sketch, and follow the same procedure with my spline. Just in case, I'll add a point here that I can pivot around if I need to, and come close again. And pierce. 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 It's actually looking quite shark-like. I'm pleasantly surprised. Not bad. So now it's starting, the, the whole thing with the guide curves is starting to look like a shark. Let's get ready to loft this. The first thing I want to do is select lofted boss base and select the beginning part that I want to loft. And we're going to run into some problems, so this is a probably a good way to, to go over troubleshooting as well. The first thing that I want to do when I loft is select the consistently near the top of the cross-sectional sketches that I've made. Notice that I get an error here, and that's because it will self-intersect. When I go to loft it, it tells me, oh, self-intersecting geometry. And what's going on is I'm lofting from this point, great, but then I've got to, I'm dramatically wide, and i got to meet this guy, so then when I go to loft back here, I can't just loft here, stop, and change directions. The loft is going to want to curve in and out. And since the other side does the same thing, it intersects itself. That's why I put some guide curves in, to stop that from self-intersecting. So, I simply click on my guide curves, and I want to choose the curves first that prevent it from self-intersecting. Well, let's see if I can... Not very symmetrical there. That's why I have my mirror messed up here. So let's fix that. I'm going to edit the sketch, and I mirrored this, so I'm just going to delete what I mirrored. And this didn't pierce right. Delete. I'm going to uh, delete this as well, and make sure that it pierces on this side. That's better. Now I'm going to add my center line. And I want to mirror this about this. And it looks like I lost some um, relations there. So I'm going to re-pierce everything. joke is when you re-pierce things, it's as though the earlobe healed over or something. Pierce. There you go. Has to get re-pierced. Now. Rebuild. Let's try that again. Loft boss base. Choose this nose. Click near the top of all of my cross-sectional sketches. It's important to click near the top. Gives me that self-intersect error. So I'll choose this, and I'll choose this. And we know I got my loft back. So now SOLIDWORKS goes, oh, I see how I should curve that. I can make that work now. Now I will choose this guide curve. And this guide curve. I'm going to unselect this guide curve. So there's something about this that SOLIDWORKS doesn't like. Let's see what that is. When I go to loft it, it just failed to complete. So it didn't give me that much information as to what's wrong here. I will edit the sketch, go with a geometry that's perhaps a little less aggressive. There we go. It was just a little bit too aggressive for that loft to be able to keep up with. Choose the bottom one, and I've got the shark. Comparing, I may want to make his head a little bit wider. And I notice that I'm getting a... The, the top of this shark's head is very round. And this shark's head is a little bit buckled in. And so we can do something about that. You can probably see a little bit more clearly. That's not a very round head. And I can adjust the guide curves to make the pectoral fins look a little bit more realistic. So let's, um, let's deal with that round head first. I'll delete my loft, because I can loft it again later. And I'm going to make an intermediate sketch that will be referenced from the front plane.
This was 1.25, I'm sorry, a uh, quarter inch. So I'll flip the offset and I'll say 0 0.25 plus, I'll do an eighth inch more, 0 0.125. That's about right. And what I'll do here is sketch on this plane another spline, a circular type shape. And let me get normal to my sketch here. I can be coincident on that construction line, that's okay. I'll make the top and the bottom on that line and complete it here. And then I'll make these horizontal. Choose this point of the spline and this line and pierce. This point and on the guide curve here, pierce. And that will preserve the roundness of the head until we need to uh, I don't want to pierce that actually what I would prefer doing is making this coincident on here and that way it will progressively grow from that dorsal fin And that looks like it'll be a pretty abrupt transition, so I'm going to exit the sketch and actually adjust this plane to be half an inch. That's looking a bit better. I'm going to <laughs> take this point, pierce it, and then Okay, so sketching on this plane, I'm going to create a spline and get normal to my plane. And I'm going to be, I can be coincident on a vertical line, it's fine. Create that. I'm going to make sure that this point and this point are horizontal. I'll pierce this guideline and Pierce, oh, wrong line. Pierce, Pierce, Pierce. Great, so now I'm lofting to a face that isn't concerned with having this geometry. It's pretty much round uh, as far as I care. And so after this point, then it will start developing a little more pectoral type shape. Now, I'll get rid of this plane, after I exit the sketch, of course. And I'll try lofting it again, with that error fixed. Choose near the top, near the top, near the top, near the top. There's our favorite error that I can fix with our guide curves. We got our left back. So there's our shark-like shape. I still haven't adjusted my spline to account for a more realistic looking pectoral fin. So when you go to make a loft and uh, you start selecting things, you may come across some continual problems that are quite difficult to handle. You expect to lose the loft here and then you can pick it up again. You do your sides here. And if you don't, um, the, the suggestions I would give is check the curvature to make sure it isn't too extreme and check the relations to make sure that you're pierced when you're supposed to be pierced on a guide curve and you're uh, not pierced when you're not supposed to be pierced. So guide curves should be pierced to the, uh, the drawings that they guide the loft on and drawings shouldn't be pierced to the guide curves usually. So make sure that those things work out and uh, I'll give an example of a finished product here. Here's an example of the uh, finished product, the guide curves that we used and the sketches that we were lofting from. You can go in and adjust the splines on, but it looks uh, pretty similar to uh, what we wanted to make. And we can uh, continue to adjust out anything that we feel is, uh, is out of what we want. So hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.